Hello, Thack from Thack Ironworks. Welcome to the channel. Today we are making a ladle for my previous project, which was the cauldron. So I'm making a ladle to go with that. Earlier this week, I did a little Instagram post and asked you, my viewers, to vote on what you wanted to see. And I gave you the choice of a wizard or a queen. And it was pretty close, actually, but the wizard did edge it out slightly. Also got a lot of really weird requests, um, like um, wizard queen, lizard queen, witch, and different things. So um, perhaps we'll be making more handles in the future. Let's just see how this wizard goes. So let me show you something. So after the votes were in, I uh, decided I need to start sketching out my wizard concept. Um, went to grab some paper, couldn't find any paper, but there was a pizza box sitting there on the counter, so I used that instead and it turned out to be a really good um, thing I was able to sit out in my back deck and actually just sketch this up right on the pizza box. So anyway, this was the first wizard idea I came up with, and I kind of liked his grumpy, uh, I don't know, petulant sort of look. Um, the scale was too large though, so I, I did another one and kind of mixed up uh, things a little bit, brought it down. Realized after I did this one, still a little bit big and scaled it down even further till it fit into my hand. Remembering the scale of the cauldron, which has an eight inch opening, so not very big. So I didn't want this ladle to end up being, you know, almost as big as the opening. So I, I try to scale everything back. This is where I landed as far as my profile for that. So anyway, this was the design that I came up with and you might be thinking, that I'm not seeing wizard, I'm seeing, uh, disgruntled Christmas elf. And, and yeah, fair enough, but uh, I would think a lot of Santa's helpers are probably fairly disgruntled. I think work condi conditions are poor, and it would drive a lot of them to the esoteric arts, you know, necromancy and that sort of thing. So I'm going to stand by my decision on that. I think it's pretty cool, a little rope twist on here, and uh, let, well, let's just see what happens. I'm sure as I get into this, this will evolve. So let me just show you something here. So I took, I took um, my profile, the proper size there, traced it out, and then from there was able to make this, and then from there was able to make this. So now I've got a steel cutout. And in doing that, actually putting it in my hand, I realized the orientation fits better in my right hand, the opposite way so I had my these guys were looking to the left um, so I'm making it looking to the right so I did a little switcheroo on there um, also after I did my sketching I just grabbed some plastic as I'm often want to do and I don't know Eric are you getting the different contrast there um, just did a quick uh, maquette mock-up in that um, something more 3d uh, just to give me an idea this one came out very garden gnome like that viking-esque sort of angry um, odin type thing so i don't know where i'm going to land on the actual one but my i guess my criteria for this one is i'm trying to do this um, more two-dimensional a very thin profile our very thin thickness and then it's it's all very much profile with a slight Twist. I can't do a st straight profile. I'm, just, I'm messed up in the brain. Um, so I have to do a slight twist in there to give it a little bit more of a three quarter pose, which is going to complicate things. But let's just see how this actually works out. Here we go. Okay, so what I've done is just bulged out my profile roughly so that I can now go in, I'm just gonna go in with a grinder, die grinder, and, and sharpen up this same profile onto here so I've got something definite to start with. So I've just kind of moved steel around to get it um, to cover the areas there. So we'll let this cool off. While we're letting this cool, let's get into the actual uh, hemisphere ladle portion. In keeping with the bronze cauldron, I decided to use a piece of bronze for the actual ladle part. Um, and size-wise, again, I'm trying to keep the scale down. I need a circle that's bigger than what you think the finished one's gonna look like because it's going to come in a little bit. I'm just gonna take this zip disc here, which is four and a bit inches, four and a half maybe. 
Um, and we'll just see how this works out. So I'll just trace this out. The thing I like about used zip disks is I've got a bunch of different sizes um, at, just so that I can grab quickly. I don't have to bother getting a compass and doing it that way. And I can put a circle in and I've always got my center point is very easy to mark. But anyway, that's a little aside there. I'll just go over to the Beverly Shear, shear this out. I'll be back. So, two quick passes there, and I've got a basic shape there. I'm not going to overwork this, really, uh, in keeping with the cauldron, which was very rough hammer, and I'll keep it like that. I've got some wrinkles around the edges, so I'm just going to jump over to my ball stake and work on that, if you'd like to join me. I uh, just want to point out, I'm using my Newman 60-pound swage block here, which is a very handy block. Yeah all kinds of different shapes on it. So that's available on Thack's website, by the way, just saying. All right, so I profiled my steel here. So now I've got the corresponding shape there. So now I can start putting my low relief into it. Um, I don't know if you can make this out, but I did my, I sharpied in some of the features here. So now I'm just gonna go in with a cold chisel and begin to start refining that. I'm just trying to think through my process here. So I'm gonna be putting the, the features in cold and then um, intermittently heating things up to get some more depth and movement. Here we go.
All right, uh, I'm going to call that a sufficient level of detail. I could certainly go on, but uh, I like the effect that I've achieved here. What I need to do now is bring our curl in and drop it in this little depression that I have here. Um, and then we need to forge out the rest of the handle. So back to the forge. All right, and there we have it. I decided to make the handle fairly short there. Um, I got thinking about my situation in the fireplace there, and I'd rather have something that where I can get in there fairly tight. Um, I don't think I'm gonna be in crazy heat or anything like that. So anyway, this is what I came up with proportion-wise. Uh, forged this out. I didn't speak during this whole process. I think it was fairly self-evident what I was up to. Uh, so now what I need to do is drill some holes into the ladle part and rivet that on. So let's do that. And there we have it. So that was a fun little project. I really enjoyed that one. Um, so it's uh, also very adorable, which I apologize for. I'm sorry, I'll try to get back into the badass stuff in future videos. But anyway, it does suit the cauldron. And stupidly, I'm thinking now, I didn't even bring the cauldron to fit that in. Uh, maybe when we do our beauty shots, Eric will actually get it back to the hobbit hole and do in cauldron photographs for that. I uh, just want to point out, uh, based on the cauldron video, speaking of that, um, a few of the comments, people were concerned about the safety of cooking in bronze. And we just did some quick research now, um, and I, I think I, I want to do some further research, but it seems that it's not uh, a health risk. Uh, copper and brass are slightly toxic for cookware. Bronze is not, as long as it's uh, a newer manufacturer of bronze without any arsenic or lead uh, contained within it. Silicon bronze does not contain either of those substances. So uh, apparently it is safer cooking. What I do remember from reading Mark Twain, um, Tom Sawyer recently reading that, and they were talking about the verdigree is poisonous. And I have heard that in the past, that the, the green dust, the, the oxidation that forms um, is toxic. So perhaps if you do not scrub your pots and you got some, some a little bit of fuzz on there, that could be a problem. But we're going to look further into that and maybe address that in our, the, our upcoming video I want to do in actually cooking in this cauldron with my new ladle. So that's it for now. Um, we'll see you next time. Uh, comments below. Um, please consider supporting the channel on Patreon. Uh, we did the Instagram boat thing, trying to work on an algorithm for that. We're struggling to do stuff to, to get our numbers up. We, we get a lot of comments, people saying we should have half a million subs and stuff like that, and we don't. So, you guys, the viewer, need to help me out on that, um, whether with uh, some advice on that or just spread the word. So, I'll see you next time. We'll do something fun. It's going to be badass next time, I promise. Back out. See ya!